Hey guys, in this video I am going to show you how to convert your modified or square wave inverter to pure sine wave inverter. Here I have this cheap Chinese 500 watt inverter. As you can see the output waveform is modified square wave, not pure sine wave. Let's open it. First of all, you have to know how this inverter works. First, the 12 volt DC comes from your battery connected to this couple of MOSFETs. The case of the MOSFETs connected to a PWM generator IC. Switching frequency in this case is 33 kHz. So the 12 volt continuous voltage converted to 12 volt PWM pulses and goes to the transformer inputs. The output voltage of this transformer will be 230 volt AC. The output voltage of this transformer connected to bridge out rectifier and a big capacitor. The voltage across this capacitor will be about 260 volt DC. Then these four MOSFETs switching by another PWM generator IC. To convert the 260 volt DC to about 230 AC voltage with a frequency of 50 Hz. Then we are going to converting this square inverter to pure sine wave inverter. The first problem due to this conversion is the peak voltage. Assuming we have two AC waveform with the same frequency, the square wave peak voltage should be 260 volt to give us 220 volt RMS. But the sine wave peak voltage should be 311 volt to give us 220 volt RMS. So if you convert this inverter to pure sine without solving this problem, the output voltage will be 180 volt instead of 220 volt RMS. To solving this problem, you have to increase the output voltage of this transformer. To increasing the output voltage of any transformer, you have two ways. The first way is increasing the output or secondary winding turns number. The second way is decreasing the primary winding turns number. So I removed this transformer from the board and open it. The primary side made by two coil, each coil three turns. I decreased the winding number from three to only two turns. The primary wire made by eight wires in parallel for handle the high current. Then I resolder this transformer on the board. Then we have to increase the switching frequency of the input MOSFETs from 33 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz because we decreased the turning number of the primary and decreased the inductance. According to datasheet of ICTL494, I have to replace this 15 kilo ohm resistor to 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. After running the circuit, as you can see the voltage across this capacitor increase from 260 volt DC to 335 DC voltage. The next step is feeding SPWM signal to the MOSFETs gates. I remove the IC from the board and connect two SPWM signals comes from Arduino board in place of uh, pin number 8 and pin number 10 
of the IC. Now we have SPWM in the output of the inverter. A low pass filter in the output to convert SPWM to pure sine wave. As you can see, after connecting the low pass filter in the output, now we have a sine wave. But this waveform is not very clean, there are some spike. So I put a 0.8 microfarad capacitor in the output. And the output become a clean pure sine wave. This transformer is a feedback loop connected to the feedback pin of the IC. To make the output voltage stable whether the load is on or off. See what happens if I remove the feedback loop. The output voltage changes depend on the load. So the feedback loop is necessary. To make the output voltage stable whether the load is on or off. So there are five steps to convert any modified or sequel wave inverter to pure sine wave. Step number one is increasing the output voltage of the transformer. Step number two is increasing the frequency of output MOSFET switching. Step number three is feeding a SPWM signal to the gates of the output MOSFETs. Step number four is using a low pass filter to converting the SPWM to pure sine wave. And finally, step number five is using a feedback loop to make the output voltage stable. As always, I put the wiring and Arduino coding in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.